Jen Psaki just dropped one of her signature Psaki bombs on Ted Cruz and the Republican Party for their feigned outrage after President Biden said that he would keep his promise to nominate the first black woman to the Supreme Court. How do you respond specifically to Ted Cruz, who overnight called it offensive, the defense of the black women that he would make that point? Well, here's what I would say first. Um, just over a year ago, the previous president also promised to select a woman for the Supreme Court. Not only were there no complaints about choosing a nominee from a specific demographic uh, from the same corners, but there was widespread praise of now Justice Barrett on those grounds, with Republican lawmakers widely highlighting that they thought this was positive for women in America. So take Senator Cruz himself. He had no objection to Donald Trump promising he'd nominate a woman in 2020. Uh, repeat, no objection at all. In fact, he praised her on these grounds during, praised her on these grounds, the nominee. Uh, during her confirmation hearing, Senator Cruz said, quote, I think you're an amazing role model for little girls. What advice uh, would you give little girls? Uh, when President Reagan honored his campaign pledge to place the first woman on the court, he said it symbolized the unique American opportunity. There is no outcry around that. Ted Cruz recently said that Biden's promise to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court was, quote, insulting and offensive. The, the fact that he's willing to make a promise at the outset, that it must be a black woman, I got to say that's offensive. Right. You know, you right. know, black women are what, 6% of the U.S. population? <laughs> He's saying to 94% of Americans, I don't give a damn about you. You are ineligible. And he's also saying it's actually an insult to black women. The press secretary fired back, citing precedent like Ronald Reagan in 1980 on the campaign trail, promising to nominate a woman to the Supreme Court. Now, I'm announcing today that one of the first Supreme Court vacancies in my administration will be filled by the most qualified woman I can possibly find, one who meets the high standards I will demand for all court appointments or as recently as Donald Trump promising to nominate a woman to the Supreme Court I will be putting forth a nominee next week it will be a woman here's the deal in over 230 years there has not been a single black woman on the Supreme Court the highest court in the land has incredible power over the daily lives of Americans. So it is way past time that the Supreme Court be more representative of the American population. And all the nominees that President Biden is considering are beyond qualified. Like Katanji Brown Jackson, a judge on the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, which is considered one of the most important federal panels and has been a regular feeder to the Supreme Court. Or J. Michelle Childs, a United States District Judge of the U.S. District Court for the District of South Carolina or Leandra Kruger, an associate justice of the Supreme Court of California. These represent just a few of the highly qualified judges that President Biden is considering. And let's remember that the American Bar Association rated 10 of Trump's justices that he nominated as unqualified, and Republicans voted them in anyway. And that's before we even get to the fact that Donald Trump stacked the courts with judges pre-selected by the extreme right Federalist Society. So if we're really being honest here, when we talk about President Biden nominating a qualified black woman to the Supreme Court, we know from history that Republicans don't care about qualifications. They don't care if a woman is promised the position. It seems that there's one word in particular that's bothering them.